it makes sense we repeated uh, a few times already so this is a magnification a closer look of what we just talked about um, it's basically the same thing um, it start with photo system 2 um, let's use blue photo system 2 okay photo system 2 absorbs and it's so sunlight sunlight is here oh this is bad not a good idea photo system 2 absorbs sunlight so the photon goes into the pigment these are the pigment like chlorophyll or, 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 or um, chlorophyll or, 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 or those uh, carotenoid and the photosystem to absorb the energy and then the photon uh, it, it gains the energy to do what? splitting the water gains the energy to split water into um, two hydrogen ion and uh, oxygen atom and then the electron from the covalent bond inside the water molecule will be energized because of the uh, photon okay then the photosystem 2 will pass this high energy electron to the electron transport chain electron transport chain will receive this high energy electron and then this electron transport chain will gain the electron transport chain will gain the energy from the energized electron to do what? to do active transport it will pump hydrogen ion from stroma remember stroma has low concentration into thylakoid which has high concentration of hydrogen ion that's why it is an active transport and active transport require energy and the energy comes from the uh, energized electron made from the photosystem 2 okay and then the electron transport chain will pass the high energy electron to photosystem 1 photosystem 1 also has a pigment system that can absorb sunlight okay why because by that time the electron in the photosystem 1 already loses the energy because the energy is used by the electron transport chain to do active transport so by the time photosystem 1 receives the electron the electron it does not have enough energy so what does photosystem 1 do it absorbs sunlight and then use the photon light energy to energize to re-energize that electron then this electron can do work what does it can what can it do so the um, the electron becomes energized and then uh, photos and then you combine with the two hydrogen ion to make the NADPH this is a simplified version okay this is the one thing that the um, photosystem one make so photosystem one is here and we said that photosystem two make two things okay the second things the photosystem to make is basically uh, the ATP by the um, ATP synthase why remember that we keep the electron transport chain keep pumping the hydrogen ion to go into the thylakoid so that inside the thylakoid we have a lot of hydrogen ion and all these hydrogen ion they want to go out to go to stroma because stroma they have low hydrogen ion concentration outside here the stroma has low hydrogen ion concentration so they want to go out when they go out it is called diffusion so it does not require energy but 
it has to go through the uh, a membrane protein we call it ATP synthase because the hydrogen ion is repelled by the membrane the forcible lipid bilayer as it go through the ATP synthase um, the movement or the kinetic energy of the hydrogen ion the kinetic energy is converted to chemical energy ATP by, uh, by the ATP synthase so therefore you may say that okay the photosystem one indirectly make ATP okay let's take a look so how do we produce ATP so in the stroma pH is A I told you that it is uh, basic because in the stroma we have low hydrogen concentration low hydrogen ion concentration that's why it is pH A oh we already, show, we already see it here oh, I don't need to write this okay low hydrogen concentration but in the thoracoid, it is acidic because it has high hydrogen ion concentration. Because it has so, so much hydrogen ion, it makes it a little bit positive charge. Yes, it doesn't, for the strong it is negative charge because we don't have a lot of uh, hydrogen ion. The situation is like a uh, waterfall. Waterfall, okay? On top of the waterfall, you have uh, a lot of hydrogen ion. At the bottom of the waterfall, you have low hydrogen ion. Meaning that on top of the waterfall, it is inside the thylakoid. I just put THY here. And outside, we call it stroma. The stroma. I just put STRO stroma. Stroma has low hydrogen ion concentration. So when the um, hydrogen ion inside the thylakoid move out of the thylakoid to go to the stroma, may I ask, does it require any energy? No, because it is going down the concentration gradient. It is a form of a diffusion. And the moving of this uh, hydrogen ion, uh, you know that hydrogen ion is moving from thyroid inside thyroid to outside to the stroma. The movement of this hydrogen ion has the kinetic energy. And then somehow we can capture this kinetic energy and then convert it into ATP. It is the movement of the hydrogen ion by the uh, passive transport, by the diffusion, that, um, that does not require energy, but we take advantage of the movement of the hydrogen ion uh, in the form of a kinetic energy. We convert the kinetic energy of the hydrogen ion into chemical energy ATP basically that's the whole idea so we have the kinetic energy here okay I don't think I can write horizontally I just put kin here kinetic energy is converted into the chemical energy And then, as I repeatedly said, the ATP will be used for production of glucose in Kelvin cycle. So what about NADP or NADP plus? Remember I told you that the differences between NADP plus and NADPH? NADP plus is a molecule with low energy.
No, well, let's just put. Let's be consistent. Low energy. Okay, it gives you a structure, and no, you don't need to memorize the structure. It is it is torturous for you to memorize the structure. One thing that I want to bring it up is nicotinamide. Nicotinamide is your vitamin B. So please take your multivitamin. It's, um, well, this is plant. Okay, we'll talk about, we'll talk about this uh, when we talk about cellular respiration. Okay. Anyway, um, you don't need to memorize structure. So it's explained to you um, why we call it nicotinamide adenine uh, dinucleotide phosphate because um, it has all this group. This molecule has all this group, okay? It has the nicotinamide group, it has the adenine group, it has the dinucleotide, and it has the uh, phosphate group. But uh, as I said, you don't need to know the structure. Okay, how do you get NADPH? Okay, remember your PS1, uh, Photosystem 1, okay? So, in Photosystem 2, previously in Photosystem 2, we, we generate a high energy electron. And then, high energy electron is from uh, splitting the water. And also we have a hydrogen atom, okay. All these, as I said, we, we take all these and then give it to NADPH. Give the NADPH and then NADH, DP, NADP plus will become NADPH. Basically that's, that's the whole reaction. So remember, um, we keep talking about this, NADPH will be used uh, in the Kelvin cycle, the second half of the photosynthesis to produce glucose. Kelvin cycle is also known as dark reaction, is also known as carbon fixation. And remember, NADPH and ATP, we will use them for Kelvin cycle. Okay, we finished the non-cyclic pathway. Okay, non-cyclic pathway is the most important because um, um, it it is the one that um, the photosynthesis is mainly about. The cyclic electron pathway is minor. The cyclic electron pathway uses only the PS one photosynthesis photosystem one. So. As I mentioned before, PS1, they also absorb photon. They also do a little bit... They also cause um, ATP production. Remember, as whenever a photosystem uh, absorb light, what will happen? They will have electron, energized electron. The making of the energized electron from the photosystem one, it will not transfer to photosystem two. It will not. Instead, it will just return to photosystem one. Yes. And that's how we call it cyclic. This cyclic pathway, that means the getting a high energy electron and then the high energy electron going back to photosystem one. Why, why does photosystem one require the high energy electron? The high energy electron is for making the ATP. They use the high energy electron to make ATP. 
ATP. So uh, photosystem one absorbs solar energy here. Then guess what? After absorb the solar energy, solar energy energize the electron. And then the high energy electron make ATP. So basically it's just this very simple concept. Um, it's not as complicated as the uh, uh, the, 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 the non-cyclic pathway, okay? So that's about it. Oh, this is the picture. This is the pictures, okay. Um, so first step, you have the sunlight. Then when you have sunlight, it is absorbed by the pigment. And this is photosystem one of the photosystem one and then it will generate a high energy electron and a high energy electron will return to the photosystem one through a electron transport chain and then you will make ATP so the energy stored in a high energy electron uh, this one here will make ATP and the ATP is also used in the Kelvin cycle it's also used in the Kelvin cycle that we will talk about uh, in the next lecture yeah that's the end I hope you understand it we repeat several times about the non-cyclic pathway um, uh, I hope you understand it uh, if you don't understand it it's okay we will talk about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is exactly the same, but opposite direction. It is the exact opposite of the uh, photosynthesis. So you have the second chance to learn about this. But uh, before we start cellular respiration, we will talk about the uh, Kelvin cycle.